Well, as you see, uh, this topic is about uh, the extra notes in between notes. Um, is that a tongue twister or something? No. It's really, um, if you have an element, say if you have a beam, and somehow uh, there is some distributed load inside it, um, how do you include that in your matrix structural analysis? Um, yeah, you, you're like, okay, well, maybe maybe it's not uh, that common, but uh, in fact, all final element code, they, they'll have to handle that, uh, at least for structural analysis, because we all have gravity. I mean, gravity, you think about it, it's actually a distributed load that's within your element. You can't get rid of it, right? So it's important to look at that. What I see is that uh, the e uh, effect of uh, um, in element load can be formulated in a matrix structural analysis uh, by by doing what through uh, a concept of what we call uh, equivalent uh, nodal force forces. So w what I mean is, uh, um, you know, when you when you do this matrix structural analysis, when you do this, uh, okay, delta equals f thing. Um, all you're doing is delta and f. They are, you can think about the concentrated effect at the nodes. You don't have any information of what's going on in inside of the element. Uh, what this says is that if you have something that's going on along the element or whatever, uh, their effect can be taken care of by including them as equivalent load of force, which means this in element effects can be represented by, um, you know, those nodal forces. Uh, or, how to do this? Uh, this is uh, through um, the principle of virtual work. Yeah. So how, how, do, you, how do you do that? Uh, if you still remember um, how we actually developed the EK for this thing, we did the uh, principle of virtual work by um, external equals to internal, and uh, we, we we calculated this part with a whole bunch of uh, um, integrations of the B matrix, but this part we get it easy because at that moment we didn't consider the in element nodes; we're just everything's nodal. Uh, so in fact. Um, all that changes now is that you have some nodes in, in between your element. Then, yeah, guess which term you have to include those 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 forces. This is gonna be in here because those forces are external. So um, let's use the beam as an example. Basically, say if you have a beam element, and then you have some a more general, um, um, you know, distributed load. Um, and uh, if that's not enough, you, you have some, like, you concentrated forces in between. Maybe this is like, a, you know, let's say FA, which is at point A, uh, and then this is like QX. Um, and then you also have some like you know um concentrated moment uh let's say if you have another moment here at like m b where you know I don't know why they do that, but they, they just kind of this is like the worst case, okay so how do you do that uh the the key is that nothing changes here uh so if you say there if there's nothing changes here that means your e k uh will not change 
So those effects are all going to be included as nodal forces. So let's take a look at our, like how did we came up with our initial nodal force in the first place. We're doing this. I remember, if you, if you still remember, is like we're giving those guys some virtual displacement. We're doing the um, V1, uh, theta 1, V2, theta 2. Uh, and then we're gonna time them by the uh, our nodal force F uh, one M one F two and M two. Uh, those are the uh, nodal forces um, that's acting on it. But now we have all the other stuff. So on top of this, we will have uh, some basically it's some some yep. I say like the virtual work uh, uh, down by uh, like this QX and then we'll have some like a uh, virtual work uh, by uh, this uh, FA then we'll have some virtual work by um, you know this MB uh, but then uh, you're like oh how, how do I calculate that So, uh, you have to think about, uh, you know, we know those forces. So, we now just need to figure out how much, like how far they moved. Um, it's, yeah, if it's for the easiest things, like for the concentrated force and MB, it'll be exactly how much the point A moved and then how much the point B uh, rotated. Um, so, um, if you're gonna do it, then you're like, oh, how am I gonna do it? Um, let's say yeah, if you if you know your virtual uh, displacement, delta v x, then let me ask you, can you calculate those? Yeah, you're like, okay, yeah, sure, I can calculate those. Uh, like for example. For, for this guy, it'll be it'll be quite easy. It'll just be uh, if I plug in delta um, like a x location of a, and then times f a, then uh, I'm down. Okay. Like for this guy, it's a little bit more complicated because now it's rotation, but it's actually not too bad. If I just uh, uh, find the slope uh, of uh, the you know the rotation of this beam at any point. Uh, then I evaluate it at x equals to uh, x b. Uh, then I times m b. Then I'm down. Okay. Um, yeah, for, for this one, in fact, though, since we're doing it, uh, it's it's simple. It's actually just zero to l um, and then v x. Uh, oh, not v, but delta. <coughs> Because it's real force doing uh, work on virtual displacement, then Q X D X, that's it. But how do you uh, cast that uh, in terms of uh, um, equivalent nodal force? Uh, yeah, this is again we're going back. You need to realize that um, the. Um, this guy is actually equals to um, delta uh, of uh, v1 theta 1 v2 theta 2 which is the virtual uh, displacement check out check check on the lecture last time you know where I'm going with this and then n uh, v1 n theta 1 n v2 and n theta 2 Okay, so yeah, this is a function uh, that's written out in a vector form. So all you need to do is just to, you know, put plug that in. So the, mm, so you, you know, of course those can be anything, but they're also constant, so you, they don't integrate, you can take them out. You, you can, in fact, Whenever there is this guy, you can take them out any time, including when you have derivatives, because they're constant, 
they don't mess around with derivatives, they're out. So in fact, you can take everything out. Uh, then uh, the like those three became something like this. It becomes uh, the uh, virtual displacement at the nodes. Uh, then times um, the uh, zero to L and uh, uh, yeah you got your n v one n theta one n v two n theta two uh, times q x and then you need to remember like each one of those n's they are functions of x so it's just function of x times function of x then you do the integral um, and then uh, plus uh, for, for this guy there's no integral and no, nothing you just need to plug in x a so in fact uh, it's simply uh, n v1 uh, at uh, x a n v2 uh, theta 1 uh, at x a uh, n v2 at x a n theta 2 at x a then times your f a uh, then finally then you plus um, yeah this one's a little bit uh, yeah just more work so it's like d uh, n v1 d x Ah yeah, I you know the drill. I don't want to write all of that. So finally, d n d theta two, d x this thing. Uh, then you plug in x equals to x b, then times m b. And uh, remember, uh, those three are the effect of three different. Uh, internal not internal inside element forces uh, by doing principle virtual work uh, we are calculating this entire thing as the work they've done on virtual displacement and then uh, if you look at the like real load of forces they do it on there you find out the the total external work is uh, equals to yeah and those two guys they, they are the same so equals to this vector plus this vector plus this vector plus this vector so whatever's in this uh, middle parenthesis those are your e equivalent uh, uh, node or force vector um, uh, was it caused by this Q, F, A, and M, B. Um, in fact, you can do this for any other situations based on um, the principle of virtual work. One last comment is that uh, uh, yeah, if you're interested, you can actually go ahead and do this. Um, I was just you, you can just uh, add a FA at the middle and see what you get. Uh, what you will get is uh, exactly what I will I talked to you earlier in class. It's at it's as if you fix your uh, beam ends, just fix every degree of freedoms. And then add those forces. And then you calculate the, your reaction forces at the degree of freedoms and flip them. Uh, you find out uh, it's exactly equal to what you're going to get from those integration, from those plug in the coordinates. And that's actually the, the power of uh, using shape functions. And another surprising, but yeah, actually not so surprising thing about this is uh, it does not just work with beam element. 
later on, if we are looking at uh, um, other strange element, for example, we're going to talk about an element uh, which is called a 2D element, constant triangle. Um, it has a uh, six degree freedoms. We're going to derive the EK. We're going to also say, what if, uh, you know, we have a uh, gravity acting on this. Uh, what's the equivalent force here? It's the same idea. You just apply your um, shape function. But this this one, it's a little more complicated. The conceptual concept is the same, but it's like each degree freedom will have their own shape function, then you have to just do it. Okay. So that's how you take care of the node between nodes, which is uh, you take their contribution to external virtual work and then combine them with the, the real nodal forces they became your equivalent nodal force vector then add it into your MSA analysis as external load then you're done alright